as pennsylvania lawmakers return to session they'll be taking on an issue that's uh, generating plenty of controversy across the commonwealth a comprehensive policy to unlock the economic potential of the marcella shale while preserving uh, pennsylvania's high quality of life the pittsburgh region happens to be smack dab in the center of the shale gas footprint one reason dozens of companies are expanding and locating here. One of them is uh, one of the expanding companies is homegrown law firm Eckerd Siemens, which has signed on former Pennsylvania Secretary of the Department of Environmental Protection as an expert resource on energy and the environment. John Hanger is back with us, and so is Tim Ryan, the firm's managing partner. And welcome. Good to have you both back. Great Thank to be here. Know. So, okay, you spent the last year of the Rendell administration, uh, you know, uh, in the crossfire over, over this whole Marcella Shale policy issue. It looks like uh, the state might, may finally be prepared to come to grips with it. Well, absolutely, the shale gas revolution really picked up speed in 2008. Uh, there was a lot of work done on policy from 2008 to 2010. Uh, Governor Rendell's term ended in January, and now we have the Corbyn administration and a new General Assembly. Uh, the administration of Governor Corbett uh, convened a commission and they've come forward with this, uh, I think, very thorough report. It's got, I think, something like 93 recommendations. Uh, and they're very varied and it's good half of them are in the environmental area. So it's going to be interesting to see what the General Assembly does uh, with the meat of this report. Well, and there's a lot, a lot of it, I suppose, depending on your position on the issue, to pick apart here and there or try to cherry pick or, or promote or whatever. Do you have any sense of what sort of the big brush strokes are that are going to be really critical going forward? Sure, I think uh, there's really two big buckets of uh, legislative work that you'll see. One is on the whole question of an impact fee or a tax on shale. Uh, that issue has not been put to bed. Uh, the, the report does recommend a, a f impact fee. It, 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 it voices the view that it should be very narrow with the m money uh, going back uh, to the local communities and, and not available t uh, across the state. And I know that there are others in the General Assembly who have a different view on that question, so that's going to be teed up for a big discussion. Uh, and then the second uh, big area, I think, is a, a modernization and an updating of the state's Oil and Gas Act. Uh, that act is the document that really provides the state law that governs the operations and regulations of the uh, oil and gas industry in the state. It hasn't been modernized for a long time. Uh, the commission has come forward uh, with a number of recommendations that I think are going to be supported by the gas industry as well as uh, just about every environmental group. Uh, so I think they may have found in the environmental area some important common ground. Things like how far setback must a well be from a river or from a sensitive facilities like a reservoir or perhaps schools uh, and other uh, institutions. So the, the commission, I think, uh, has done uh, some very useful work. It certainly s identified the key issues and made some recommendations that it's going to uh, move forward uh, the thinking of the General Assembly. As this moves forward, of course, and, and ultimately uh, much of it becomes law, it's going to mean a lot of work for a lot of lawyers, I would think, Tim. Are you already seeing that just in terms of the business community and what's happening in the region and in the state in terms of what's happening because of Marcellus Shale? Absolutely. It's been a uh, tremendous stimulus to the, to the, uh, the legal economy, and, and particularly in central and western Pennsylvania, with opportunities in areas that perhaps aren't, uh, aren't terribly visible at, at first sight, such as intellectual property, as uh, people are protecting trade secrets or seeking patents on certain processes that may be related to those, uh, those activities. Also areas in standard environmental work may be dealing with water, um, or, or potential ground contamination. It could be uh, relating to labor uh, and employment type problems. It could be related to real estate or um, uh, the, probably a little more specialized areas like trucking, wi which could be uh, relating to the, the hauling away of the frack waters. Hmm. I know when you were here before, you talked about kind of consolidating a lot of the firm's expertise in an area that can support not just shale gas, but across the energy industries. Is that leading to growth with the firm as well, all of this activity? F fortunately, it has, and it's led uh, not, not just in terms of number, but in terms of quality. We, we've really been able to pull together um, first-in-class lawyers and fortunately people like John Hanger that have been able to pull these different uh, disparate practice areas together to form a very solid energy-related practice now. Uh, Tim, Tim mentioned the intellectual property piece and I heard you speak recently and mentioned the progress that's been made in Pennsylvania, especially on this issue of the water discharge and the yeah. flowback. It sounds like there's some real innovation happening here. There, There is uh, and the industry and regulators have a lot to actually be proud of. Uh, in, for 
decades and decades, we just dumped uh, drilling wastewater in our rivers and streams without requiring it to be cleaned for, for what's called the total dissolved solids, the salts in the water. And starting really this year, we no longer do that. Uh, instead, the water has been either recycled or otherwise fully treated or perhaps deep well injected. Uh, drilling wastewater is not now going back into our rivers and streams without full treatment. And that's a tremendous accomplishment. It's one that is built from uh, innovation by the industry to developing recycling technology, uh, as well as from regulators uh, really s establishing serious rules and then enforcing them. And the environmental community is, has, should get some credit because they've obviously put a lot of emphasis on protecting rivers and streams. So that's an example, I think, of how technology can help answer a serious problem. Uh, and it's, it's also not just good for the rivers and streams, it's a cheaper way <laughs> of dealing with that uh, problem, the drilling wastewater, than the traditional mechanisms for dealing with it. So the bottom line, it is possible to have a healthy economy and a healthy environment. Uh, not only possible, increasingly that's required. Uh, increasingly, uh, the cleaner methods are in fact the more efficient and often the lower cost method. Very good. Well, it's a, a fascinating time, a lot to look ahead, uh, look forward to at the legislature this fall. Uh, John Hanger, Tim Ryan from Eckerd Stevens, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank it. you. And we'll be back in a minute with more of our region's business. Stay with us.